of HITC Sport and I love the African Nations Cup. I mean, it's just mental. Lads, we had an actual group game where the referee blew the full time whistle on 85 minutes because he was suffering from heat stroke. I'm sorry, what? But the game ended early because the referee had forgot to put sun cream on his nose. What? This is a competition where you could have genuine world stars looking for 300,000 pound a week contracts up against a fat left back stuck in a pay as you pay deal on the west coast of Botswana. That's Gambia, footballers from Salford City and Forest Green Rovers at this party. I mean, it's like the clash of creators where yeah, on one wing you can have one of the side men and on the other, someone who eats cat food on Twitch to about 13 viewers every night. Well, I'm still waiting for my invite in the post, so I guess that makes me Zambia. So go on then, let's have a recap. Let's run down through every Afghan team and grade each country on how well they've managed to navigate their way out of the group or not. Right, let's go. Group A, Cameroon B. Okay, so Cameroon are the host nation, right? I'm guessing the proud people of Yaoundé and Douala would happily chop off their nose to guarantee a sixth African nation's title, right? And especially on home soil. Look, they kicked off the of the squeaky 2-1 win over Burkina Faso with Vincent Abubakar scoring two penalties for half time. Then in the second match, they went 1-0 down after four minutes at home to Ethiopia. I'm guessing in that moment, Oh, penny for the thoughts of the coach, Tony Contecao. Because in that moment, he's being tactically outwitted on home soil by the former coach of Ethiopian Coffee. If they had lost this match, oh, you're damn right that the people of Cameroon would probably have demanded the coach be tied to the wing of a plane. But to be fair, they won the match 4-1, crisis averted, before slumping to a one-all draw with Cape Verde in the final group game. Yes, they qualified in top spot with seven points. Yes, Vincent Obubakar spanked in five goals to get all the attention in the group stage. I mean, take note of Bamiyang, he's soon to be your strike partner at Al Nasser on some Saudi Arabian beach. They've done well, I'll give them a B so far. Burkina Faso C. Poor old Burkina Faso. Yes, I know they sound like they got the footballing heritage of a tin of baked beans, but lads, 20 million people live in this country. On average, 5.2 children are born to each woman. I'm sorry, a house of at least five kids? That sounds like a bigger headache than sitting front row at a Katy Perry concert. 20 million people, and yet their captain is an Aston Villa bench warmer. Bertrand Traore, I mean sure he's got step overs and fancy fakes dripping out his ears But he's about as reliable as a pacemaker made of bubble gum He's essentially the modern day Solomon Kalu I'm guessing Steven Gerrard would rather bite off his own nipples than trust this fella on the Aston Villa wing Listen, Burkina Faso have qualified in second spot on four points But a 2-1 defeat to Cameroon A bland 1-0 win over Cape Verde And then slumping to a stale 1-1 draw with Ethiopia Their progress into the next round About as convincing as Chris Brown's respect for women I'll give it a C Cape Verde B Oh Okay, I want Cape Verde to do well in this tournament, lads. Right now, they are my team because they've got a 29-year-old Irish center back from Shamrock Rovers stuffed in their 11. Good old Roberto Lopez. He probably expected to spend this month riding through the bins inside Chicken Hut for his tea. You know, spending his Friday nights watching reruns of Father Ted. He did not expect to be marking Sadio Mane in a tournament last 16. Well, I'm probably the only person on the internet to say this, so please clip this up and send this to the man on Twitter or whatever. Robbie Lopez, you are an absolute legend. Listen, they've done well. They've ground out a 1-0 win over Ethiopia. Sure, a 1-0 defeat to Burkina Faso wasn't ideal. But then, Olympiacos winger Gary Rodriguez stepped up to snatch an equalizer against the host of Cameroon in a 1-1 draw. Not bad. I'll give them a solid B. Ethiopia C. I don't care that they have a population of 114 million people. Ethiopia are still one of the minnows of the tournament. But I suppose this is a country who have 13 months on the calendar year. Meaning that right now, in Ethiopia, Ethiopia, it's 2014. Does that mean they still listen to Gangnam Style? Are they just now getting around to watch the Inbetweener movie sequel? But lads, a third of the population is without safe water. A quarter of the population don't even have a toilet. This, uh... This is actually making me sad. The average person over there lives to the age of 65. Th there's no punchline here. It's, it's just sad. I want these lads to do well. This is only Ethiopia's second tournament in the past 40 years. So coming into this group, again, the poor old goalie plays for Ethiopian coffee. He must have feared the worst. But lads, one point, one draw, and only six goals conceded in three matches. Nicking a draw against Burkina Faso, not bad. Not bad at all. Go on, lads. I'll give you a C. Group B, Senegal D. Rotten. Utterly rank. Excuse me when I spit on the floor. I'm guessing right now, Sadio Mane is looking around his Senegalese dressing room and yeah, feels like fetching up his weed of bix. This is a star-studded Senegal squad featuring players scattered across Europe. Christ above, Idrissa Gay plays with Lionel Messi and Neymar every week. I remember previous Senegal teams, they might not have had the same quality and talent, but they had work rate and effort. Christ above, they beat the world champions at the 2002 World Cup and back then, 
their biggest superstar would go on to play for Bolton and Sunderland. And he would also allegedly spit at children. But lads, right now, there is no excuse. Edward Mendy is a Champions League winning goalkeeper. Foda Balatore is an AC Milan left back. Bruno Sarr is a right wing back for Bayern Munich. And are we forgetting it? Napoli centre half Kalidou Koulibaly once had a 100 million pound price tag. This guy is the Senegalese Harry Maguire. You would think this team would utterly chew through the groupie opponents as if their heads were filled with popcorn, right? This team were the AFCON favourites. The hype was stuffed down their tonsils and yet, three games played, one goal scored. And that was a dodgy 97th minute penalty against Zimbabwe. And they and just nothing sour, nil-nil draws with Guinea and Malawi. Horrific! Watching the Senegal team play football. Oh, it's like watching Danny DeVito brush his teeth. Ah, uh, no thanks. I mean, the coach, Ali Cisse, you've gone from exciting World Cup meme to this. Sure, back then you showed the intensity of R. Kelly playing chess, but now you're playing a brand of football that honestly, it's like watching pensioners poo into a coffee cup. Again! No thanks. Dull, boring football, but what do we expect from someone who was once binned by Steve Bruce? Ah, actually, I, I take that back, because so has Haddon Banafa, and I think he's football's answer to Picasso. But honestly, Senegal, right now, you are about as exciting as egg soup. I'm giving you a very limp D. Guinea C. Again, unconvincing. Yeah, I know, Guinea finished second on four points. <laughs> But I'm sorry, this is a surprisingly strong squad. You've got a Roma midfield monster like Amadou Diawara. Again, learning under one of the best managers of all time. You've got a promising teenage Sat at the end centre back, Saido Sao, who's probably going to be the next Kurt Zuma. And all of them are captained by a £60 million Premier League superstar like Nabi Keita. Oh yeah, and you've got RB Leipzig's 19 year old midfield sensation, Ilay Moroiba, who uh, spent just the 11 years on the books of Barcelona with the club trying to carve him into the next Xavi. But again, uninspiring from Guinea. By the way, uh, am I okay? to say Guinea. I don't know, I watched a lot of Sopranos last year. Isn't that an insult for Italians? Am I soon going to get Marco Materazzi sending me death threats in the post? But listen, a damn 1-0 win over Malawi on match day one. Yes, there was a spirited goal of draw with Senegal, but in the final group match, they lose 2-1 to Zimbabwe, having their defense eaten alive by someone whose first name is Knowledge. And no, I'm not talking about KSI. But a woman referee took charge of that match, and that was great, but Christ above, can you imagine if this wasn't Cameroon and instead, I don't know, the Millwall ground? Ugh. But no, for Guinea, I'll give them a pretty tame C. Malawi A. Malawi is the fourth poorest country in Africa, and over 40% of the population live on less than one dollar a day. A fifth of the country is just water. It's got one of the highest child marriage rates in the world, and the country constantly has to watch out for Madonna camping out at the airport, again, trying to steal more kids, just stuffing them into her purse. You know, Malawi's answer to it. Honestly, she's already adopted about 4% of the population. But lads, this is a country who's never so much as even won a medal at the Olympics. Their biggest sporting achievement was winning the 1998 Quidditch World Cup. And that was just fiction written by some middle-aged bint on the train. So really, was anyone even expecting Malawi to even qualify for this tournament? Let alone make it out of the group? Price well, their best player is a bench warmer for Orlando Pirates in South Africa. I assume this team walking headfirst into Afghan 2022. Oh, be a bit like agreeing to have a sleepover with the lion at the zoo. Pretty sure you'd soon be scraping your kidneys off his teeth. But lads, yes you lost to Gabon, but I'm sorry. Gabadino Mango, take a bow because you are now forever a Malawi legend, scoring both goals in a priceless win over Zimbabwe before you ground out a clean sheet against Senegal in a match where a Champions League winning superstar like Mane was made to look like a fat Aaron Lennon. Malawi, this was legendary stuff. A. Zimbabwe A. When Marvis Nakamba injured his knee in December, I'm guessing Aston Villa fans reacted the same way as if you just found out that your local bus station was changing the colour of its toilet paper. Just a bit. Nah. But Zimbabwe's fans though, because of their complete shortage of quality footballers and talent, oh, this fella's injury was probably treated as a national tragedy. Nobody expected anything of Zimbabwe. It's a country who idolized Benjani. You know that former Man City striker who used to fall asleep at airports, who mostly had the technique of banana pie. And to be fair, yes, they finished bottom. But I'm sorry, they were holding Senegal to a draw for 97 minutes and they entered the group by beating Guinea. I know they finished bottom, but I'm sorry, lads. I'm giving you an A. Group C, Morocco B. Again, Morocco were one of the favourites for the tournament, but ugh, it's been a bit uninspiring. Listen, you got off to a brilliant start. Former Southampton Turkey, Sofia Bufal, firing in the only goal of the game against Ghana. And then you labour to a 2-0 win over Comoros. And then you needed a late Ashraf Hakimi free kick wonder goal to salvage a point in a 2-2 draw with Gabon. I mean, 24-year-old goal machine Yusuf and Ezri, after 24 goals last season for Sevilla, he was supposed to explode in the tournament, right? Well, nah, he's coming back from injury. Mr. Pelli against Comoros, and what else? QPR midfield magician Ilias Chair has barely been given a sniff, and I'm still confused why there's no adult to wrap in the squad. 
It's all just a bit anticlimactic. Top of the group, seven points, but meh, I'll give you a C. Gabon B. You know what? Fair play Gabon. Not only did they lose niece midfielder Mario Lamina, but they've also been forced to watch the greatest Gabonese footballer of all time jet back to London without playing a single minute. And yet still, without him, without Obamia, yes, you ground out an uninspiring 1-0 win over Minos Comoros. And yes, you probably all feared the worst. Especially considering defeating the likes of Comoros is supposed to be about as straightforward as biting the head off a gingerbread man. Easy, right? But a late 1-1 draw against Ghana before grinding out a 2-2 draw with Morocco to finish second of five points? Not bad at all. B. Comoros A. I didn't even know Comoros was a thing. This is just some island in the Indian Ocean with just 800,000 people living on it. Sure, they lost to Gabon and Morocco without scoring a goal. Fine, we were probably all writing their tournament eulogies. But to then explode by beating Ghana 3-2 and nicking third spot? Take a bow. Uh, of course. A. A. Utterly stupendous. This is one of the greatest Afghan shocks of all time. A. Their manager, Amir Abdu. His previous job was in the French sixth tier. And now this? Mental. A. Ghana F. This is arguably one of the most hideous Afghan showings in the history of sport. Ghana, I am sorry. Hold your head in shame. This was a squad packed to the brim with quality and yet, oh and yet, you lost to Morocco, drew 1-1 one -one with Gabon. Okay, when Jim Alavina spanked in that 88th minute equalizer, it wasn't ideal, no, but then cue a 20 man brawl. Benjamin Teddy gets sent off for a punch after the full time whistle, except he then just hid in the change room toilets so the referee couldn't find him to give him a red card. That was the moment Ghana's Afghan hopes imploded into wet dust. You'd lost your heads because you then go and lose to a goddamn volcano. What? I'm sorry, the coach, Milan Rajevic, has already been sacked. Well, being sacked is not enough. He should arguably be deported and banned from ever setting foot in a Ghanaian airport for the rest of his days. What was this mess? The indiscipline. Two red cards in three games. Going out in the group stage to a team ranked 132nd in the world. And who probably have a part-time Burger King toilet cleaner playing left back. It's just horrific. Embarrassing. The greatest shame in Ghanaian football. I'm sure after stomaching that, a, a former legend like Michael Essien I must have felt like sneezing blood. Honestly, a big fat F. Ghana, this was revolting. Group D, Nigeria A. Finally, here's a tournament favorite who actually managed to live up to the hype. I'll admit it, I thought Nigeria were unprepared. Three weeks ago, they were desperately ringing up Jose Mourinho to see if he wanted the job. But no, instead, here we've got the free scoring Nigeria with the likes of Leicester's Kalichi Hianacho, Villarreal Samuel Chukwueze, and in particular, non swinger Moses Simon, whose middle name is Daddy Ajala. What? But yeah, they've all utterly lit up the tournament. Three wins over Egypt, Sudan, and Guinea-Bissau. Tries hope even Will Truth the Kong is on the score sheet. I mean, back in the Premier League, he's about as much use as a dead mouse. But yeah, brilliant from Nigeria. Take the A. Egypt D. Right, Egypt have Afghan heritage. They won the title seven times in their history. Lads, back in the 2000s, this country won the Afghan Nations Cup three times on the bounce. And that was back when the football's answer to meatloaf stuffed up front. Honestly, back then, Mido was the Egyptian king. And he was playing for Middlesbrough. Probably eating Easter eggs and a handful of chicken nuggets for breakfast. Salah would have watched all those titles as a teenager. I would have dreamed of becoming the next Amir Zaki. You know that fat lump of porridge at Wigan? Egypt have a sickeningly good Afghan record. And yet now, they argue I have the greatest African footballer of all time. Oh, okay, arguably, all right, calm down Chelsea fans. I'm sorry, Mo Salah playing against defenders from the French third tier. Up against fullbacks, but as mobile as a stack of pancakes, right? You'd all be thinking he'd be bagging hat-tricks every seven and a half minutes. Ah, uh, no. Six points, yes, but the team have only scored twice. Uh, there was a 1-0 defeat to Nigeria. Then Salah scruffs in the only goal against Guinea-Bissau. And then he draws another blank with Mohamed Abdelmanem. Some fella playing on loan at Coca-Cola FC. He then pops out to score the winner against Sudan. Mo Salah! Mo Salah! Running down the wing! Salah, you just forfeited top spot to Alex Iwobi. It's not good enough. But for Liverpool fans, I mean, you're probably delighted to see him flop in an Egypt shirt, right? I mean, this is a bit like seeing your wife out to dinner with someone else. You're actually quite pleased to see her turn up in a bin bag and spend the evening horrifying her date by eating dog food out of a tin. This is a poor Egypt showing. I'll give it a D. Sudan B. Okay, I relate to Sudan. I've only collected one point, but I'm sorry. I don't care. I'm giving them a B. This isn't a bad showing. They're an under minnow. They collected a clean sheet and a point in a nil-nil draw with Guinea Bissau. Sure, they were spiked by Nigeria, but they still grabbed a goal and then narrowly lost 1-0 to Egypt, where they contained an utter world superstar, making Mo Salah resemble a sluggish Gabby over time. Fair play. You can be proud. B. Guinea Bissau D. Yeah, bottom of the group without even scoring a goal. I know it was a tough group, but... You couldn't even 
score against Sudan? Guinea-Bissau have now gone seven games without scoring a goal. But what do you expect when the national team are still calling up players from Plymouth Argyle? Oh, just a nothing performance in this. D. Group E, Ivory Coast C. So, Ivory Coast are a favourite for the tournament. And, uh, it's just a bit underwhelming for the most part. Sure, former Bournemouth misfit Max Gradell opened the scoring after five minutes in their first game against Equatorial Guinea. You'd think the floodgates would open, right? No, it ended... 1-0. And then despite boasting superstar firepower like Sebastian Haller, Nicolas Pepe and Wilfred Zaha, they then labour to a 2-2 draw with Sierra Leone. Yes, pummeling Algeria in the final match 3-1 was brilliant, but so far, ugh, give them a pretty mediocre C. Equatorial Guinea A. How many guineas are in this damn group? Honestly, there are so many guineas running around this group, I feel like we're looking at a hamster cage in a pet shop. But, but lads, Equatorial Guinea have qualified from the group. Utter legends. This was an impossibly difficult group and you only conceded one goal. 1-0 wins over Algeria and Sierra Leone. This is ridiculous. Sierra Leone B. I almost feel bad for Sierra Leone because they nearly pulled off the impossible. This is a squad featuring defenders from Wellstone. You know, the club made famous for this. You've got no fans. You've got no ground. Yeah, that club have a defender at the African Cup of Nations. What? I mean, their defensive rock is Stephen Cocker. Do you remember when he was washed up putting at the D? How was his former England goal-scoring international at the goddamn AFCON? Lads, they've got a left back from Essex, they've got strikers from Wickham and Peterborough, while their talisman is 37-year-old Kay Kamara. You might remember him from flopping at Norwich City 10 years ago. All they had to do was beat Equatorial Guinea and they'd have qualified, but they bottled it, losing 1-0 instead. But still, Sierra Leone, I'm giving you a B. Algeria F. Utter disgrace. Algeria are the reigning Afghan champions. They've got a forward line featuring the likes of Saif Ben Rama, Riyad Mahrez, oh yeah, and Barcelona linked Baghdad Bounija. A man with 323 goals in just 373 career games. This is a man linked with the new camp. He scores about 40 goals a season. And Chuck in Algeria is all time record goal scorer like Islam Slamani. And they should have eaten this group on toast. So finishing bottom on one sad and lonely point. Failing to score against Sierra Leone and Equatorial Guinea, it doesn't compute. What just drew? What happened? Big fat F. Disgrace. An actual disgrace. What happened? The coach, Jamal Bamadi, had suffered just one defeat in 44 games in charge. Well, guess what, Billy Boy? You've just lost two games in a week. Horrific. Absolutely horrendous. F. 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 Group F. Mali B. Okay, well, Mali did well. Ground out a 1-0 win over Tunisia. Then a 1-0 draw with Gambia. And then a routine 2-0 win over Mauritiana. With Masario Haidara scoring a goal. Yes, he's still alive. Routine job, top of the group, give him a B. Gambia A, brilliant, utterly brilliant. Gambia, AFCON debutants. Yes, they have a ball on a superstar like Musa Barrow in their team, but other than that, oh man. So squeaking a 1-0 win over Mauritiana. Okay, that was expected. But scraping a last minute draw with Mali before nicking a last minute win over Tunisia. They are the kings of last minute drama. Seven points. I'm giving them an A. Tunisia D. Poor. Yeah, I know they were denied five minutes of football against Mali. But I don't care because you still couldn't score in the other hour and a half. Sure, you at least smash Mauritiana. With a former son and dish towel like Wabi Kazri running the game. But to then go and lose to Gambia? Sneaking into the next round in third on just three goddamn points? D. Mauritiana C. Three games played, zero goals scored, seven goals conceded. It's not great, but it's Mauritiana. What do you expect? I'm, I'll give them a C. Lads, the Afghan Nations is absolutely insane. What a tournament. All right. Honestly, brilliant. Anyway, that's it for this video. Guys. What do you think? All right, let me know. Who do you think is going to win the tournament? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.